Good afternoon. This is Jim Ray with the Road to the Autry Masters. I am here with um, Masters landscape artist uh, Jim Wilcox. It's snowing up where Jim is in Jackson, Wyoming right now. <laughs> uh, he's he's sending water our way, <laughs> as he says. Jim, welcome. Uh, glad to have you here. Oh, thank you. Nice to be here. So uh, Jim has um, uh, been in this uh this game for a very long time and he's very good at it uh it, and part of it is represented by the long list of awards that uh that he's won over the years and i'm not going to get into the detail except to mention that uh he's won numerous awards from the national arts for the parks from the buffalo bill show from the the western rendezvous not to mention being an award winner and purchase award winner at both the Masters of the American West and the, the Preta West at the National Cowboy Museum. So um, we're quite fortunate to have uh, have an artist of your stature here and um, look forward to learning a little bit about your, your work, Jim. Oh, thank you. Um, so I like to start off by uh, asking artists how they got to where they are. Um, Tell us a little bit about your artistic upbringing. When did you figure out that you were an artist? And and once you went there, then how did you how did you follow the road up to the level that you're at operating at now? Well, when I was uh, I've always enjoyed drawing and designing things, and and in college I went into a, an art program discovered painting and color. And about midway through my college career, I decided that's what I wanted to do for a living. I wanted to paint. There were a couple of other things that were equally interesting, but they didn't sound like I could live in Jackson Hole and next to a pine tree. This is good. I, I really chose my career based on lifestyle and, uh, and also not wanting to work for a living. <laughs> so, uh, I felt like I was equally talented in several areas, and I chose the one that would allow me to live where I wanted to and and work outdoors and enjoy um, a certain amount of uh, autonomy. So fairly early on in your career, you also decided that you were going to become a gallerist, uh, and you've opened up Wilcox Gallery there in Jackson. Uh, what what drove you to what drove you to that decision? Well, at the time we moved here uh, fifty three years ago, there were only uh, two or three, maybe four art galleries in town, and uh, none of them were a good fit for my work, or they didn't want my work for whatever reason. And uh, we saw a little building that was for rent. looked looked into it decided, well, we could probably manage that. So we rented the building and moved in and we were there for a year. And then a year later, uh, the, the uh, Fig Garter Plaza opened up as a new building with multiple uh, businesses in it. And we held our breath, did a lot of uh, uh, makeshift improvements on the space. I made the, the picture lights, I made the the wall covering, well, I, I, I say I made it. I, I tacked some burlap to the, to the walls. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and we, we scavenged some of the leftover scraps from the building and made some stools that we could use in there. And uh, that was the start. And I, I decided at that time, it was a bigger space than I could fill by myself. So we started carrying other artists' work too. And it's just gone from there. In uh, 73, there was a piece of ground north of town that we thought would be a good place to possibly have a gallery. We didn't know whether it would work, but we thought if it didn't work, it'd be a nice place to live. So we bought the uh, property, we built a small building which was gallery in the daytime and house at night. And if it didn't work as a gallery, we had a house we could either live in or rent. And we, uh, the first year we had a couple working for us and they, they lived in the house and ran, <clears throat> one of them ran that gallery. 
and the other one ran the one we had in town. And uh, at the end of the summer, in those days, you didn't need to stay open in the wintertime. There was nothing going on. Um, but at the end of the summer, we thought, well, we'll rent the house out for the, for the winter. And the more we looked at potential renters, the more we decided we didn't really want to rent it. <laughs> so we moved it in ourselves and tried it on for the winter. And uh, we enjoyed it. And the next summer, we thought, well, let's try a summer. And several years later, we realized we weren't going back to our house down on the Snake <laughs> River Canyon. You are now relocated. Yeah, so we, we sold that, and we sold the, the gallery we had in the big garter, and we added on to the building here. And then eventually we uh, added a, a new gallery in town as well. Uh, we get different traffic, really, right. a lot of it. And uh, that's how the gallery got started. Are you still running one outside of town and one in town as well? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. We've we've had we've had the one out out of town since '74, and uh, the one in town is on the. We've been in several places there, but it, currently we're on the east side of the town square, which is a, a good place to be. It's about as good yeah. as it gets. Well, up there in Jackson, Wyoming, uh, up next to the Sawtooth Mountains, you've got no shortage of uh, beautiful subject matter to uh, to take on up there. Um, what kind of things are you working on for, for us at the, the Masters these days? Well, I have a, a painting of the Kolob Canyon area of Zion Park with fresh snow. I have another one of a, an aspen forest. I have a small one of a, a big cloud in late evening, and uh, I'm not sure about the other one. <laughs> it's, one thing about artists is they're frequently just touching it up right before the deadline. <laughs> get, I, get it I heard out. about artists in the old days that would go in the day before the show, open up the museum to finish their painting in the frame. Yeah, and, I believe it. I believe it. Or touch it up from the paint that got smudged when it was being shipped. <laughs> uh, artists are optimists, so they probably wouldn't be artists. Yeah. And uh, you always think the next one will be better than the last one. And when we're working on a, an important show like the Masters, we want our best work to be there. So we paint as many possibilities as we can and choose the once that we feel will be best for the show when it's time. And it's always kind of a last minute deal before we finally get everything decided. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've been around artists for a long time and I was mentioning that, uh, you know, the staff is kind of relearning the process since, uh, uh, since we lost Janet Riley last year. Uh, but um, uh, it, it takes, a special kind of person to have the patience and understanding to deal with a wide variety of artists that are <laughs> <laughs> going their own way. <laughs> yeah. You, you need a cat herder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You definitely do. So um, tell me, Jim, when you're, when you're out there wandering around and, and, and looking at all these scenes, how do you decide what's what's a keeper and what's not? How do you decide what what uh, you're going to invest your time in to, to create a, a a small masterpiece? Well, to start with, let me tell you that sometimes I go out to paint and I wander around and I, I never see a painting. I, I might be out there the whole day and not see what I felt was a painting. And then the next day I go out and I see six paintings. And... Uh, I have to, the difference between a subject, you know, the subjects are all around us. And sure. in this valley, there, there are so many subjects and they're so beautiful, but there's a difference between a subject and a painting. A painting has to be the right combination of lighting, colors, shapes, and so on. And when I see that, I say, there's a painting. And I set up my easel and go to work. 
Do you do you ever go back to uh, the scene of the crime, as it were, to see how the light changed or um, to get a different perspective on it? Well, there's some places that I go back to frequently because I love them and they're wonderful places to paint from. Uh, and it's always different. The biggest problem we have when we paint plain air is is having a subject stay the way it is long enough for us to get something down. Yeah. And you learn things that help to do that so that you're not just chasing the, the changes all day long. Uh, and then you ask if I go back. It used to be I worked quite large on, on location. And uh, sometimes I had to go back three or four times at the right time of day. And I found it was never the same. Yeah. So anymore, I'm likely to do a smaller one that's more finished on location and then take it home and use it to do larger pieces. OK, good. So um, you, you've been at this since uh, the late 60s, is that correct? Yeah. Full so time. it's now it's, it's now the early 20s. Um, uh, do you see do you see your um, your approach um, uh, pretty much staying the same, or do you see it uh, evolving? How do you how do you view um, uh, what you do over the long term? Oh, there's been some evolution, but it's uh, it's not revolution. It's not uh, it's not happening very fast. You just learn how to do things better. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep doing them and as you paint usually they they get better unfortunately then the, the next one isn't always better than the last one there's kind of a roller coaster ride to the whole thing but basically it's uphill it gets better on average as you as you age yeah it's, it's like a batting average you can't always hit a home run but uh you hope to to knock a few of them out of the park every once in a while yeah every every once in a while you get something that you know is a home run and that that gives you uh, the courage to beat through the others <laughs> well great jim i sure do appreciate your taking the time to uh, uh share your your thoughts with us uh we're hoping that a lot of people see this and and get excited about the work you're doing and come and join us and uh in Los Angeles in February, and I hope that we see you and Narda there in February as well. Well, we expect to be there. Look forward to it. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Okay, thank you.